On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, a ship pilot has died. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to this episode. So in the United Kingdom on January 8th, uh, they had a fatality during a transfer of a ship's pilot. Now, pilots have been an integral part of this channel for a long time. We talked about the very first thing here was the grounding of the Ever Given in the Suez back in March of 2021, and the role of the pilots on board was essential to understand that incident. In this case, what we're talking about is the transfer of the pilot from the pilot boat to a large deep draft vessel. Now, pilots ha undergo rigorous training. Uh, it is a very tough profession to succeed in. It is well-paying, but at the same time, extremely dangerous as you're about to see. And pilots really keep the world's commerce going in and out of ports. So what we're going to do is look at this incident. We're going to look at the association in the United Kingdom and the United States that oversees pilots. And then I'll give you a demonstration about what happens with pilots coming on and off vessels. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new stories as they come out. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to this story. So here's a story, Mike Schuller over in G Captain. A UK ship pilot has died following an accident during a pilot transfer in Northern England's Humber Estuary. The incident took place on January 8th, 2023, while the pilot was transferring from a pilot transfer boat to a large ocean-going vessel. The UK Maritime Pilot Association confirmed in a statement posted to Twitter. All right, so this is the website, and I'll have it on the show notes for you and in the uh, link. The UK Maritime Pilots Association, which supports pilots and protects trade. They issued this statement right here. Tragedy strikes as maritime pilot dies in pilot transfer accident. It is with great sadness that we report the tragic death of Francisco Gallia, a highly experienced UK marine pilot, uh, maritime pilot while tra transferring from a pilot transfer boat to a large ocean-going vessel. We extend our deepest condolences to the loved ones, friends, and colleagues and offer our support for all those affected by this terrible news. Uh, the accident occurred on January uh, 8th, January 2023 in the Humber Estuary. The cause is yet unknown and will take some time to be fully understood. The Marine Accident Investigation Branch has now opened a full investigation and, rep and will report in due course. As a pilot, Francesco Gallia was known for his passion for the maritime industry and his dedication to his job. His loss is all the more devastating as we understand that he was shortly to retire after many years of service in the maritime industry with the last two decades as a pilot. This tragedy highlights the risks and challenges faced by maritime pilots every day they go to work. They are responsible for safely navigating ships in and out of ports and harbors, often under complex and hazardous conditions, transferring from one vessel to another by nothing more than a rope ladder. This is always a risky procedure. The movement of the pilot boat, bringing the pilot alongside the ship's motion and the potential for equipment failure requires precise timing and coordination of the ship. The pilot vessel and the exact judge of the pilot as they step from one moving platform to another moving platform, often in pitch darkness in the dead of night. We'll jump to the last paragraph. We urge the maritime industry and regulatory authorities once again to prioritize safety and training with regard to the transfer of pilot and crew and invest in safe and reliable technology and procedures that ensure that our maritime pilots and seafarers return home safe after every voyage. 95% of all trade into the UK comes by ship. Not as much into the United States, but it is significant. This is the site for the American version. This is the American Pilots Association. Uh, this has been an entity since 1884, and it covers pilotage in the United States. It's a great website to go to to learn about pilots. And there's a couple of issues here I want to highlight. This is the arrangement on board ships for taking pilots on board. Some people have asked, well, why aren't they not flown out by helicopter and lowered down? Well, number one, that's extremely expensive. Uh, and also, it is equally dangerous. Uh, having a helicopter hovering over a deck and lowering someone down is a dangerous proposition. Others have asked about lowering a basket and hoisting them up by crane. Also, equally dangerous as the basket moves around and there's always the issue of equipment failure. The tried and true method is, believe it or not, a rope 
ladder, but there are restrictions in the size and scale of the rope ladder. Uh, for example, you can't be climbing a freeboard of more than nine meters, so roughly about 30 feet. Uh, it has to be less than that. Uh, the ladder has to fit so many requirements. The, the, the rungs of the ladder must be a certain dimension. The ropes must be weight tested to a certain area. There are these large boards that are out on, on the rope ladder to prevent it from twisting. And if you use a combination of rope ladder and accommodation ladder, this is the ladder that, that, or the stairwell that is hoisted down from the side of the vessel, there are also provisions for that. There's also a uh, pilot, uh, pilot ladder winch system that can be used. But again, there are a lot of safety provisions that are required. And this comes under literally the International Maritime Organization. There are rules and regulations for bringing pilots on and off the vessel. Uh, it is the most extreme danger when pilots are boarding on board. This brochure here from the American Pilots Association talks about the role of pilots. And you can see in that image right there on the left side of a pilot literally jumping off from a pilot boat onto one of those rope ladders. And you can see exactly how dangerous this is. Now, pilots are, are in the United States are state pilots. So the 24 states that have coasts, all of them basically regulate this rule. And state pilots are responsible for bringing in foreign and U.S. flags into ports. There are requirements for this. Uh, there is a compulsory state pilotage in many areas. Uh, the ships have to pay for this, so it's not a cost to the taxpayer. This is funded through the ships coming in. It requires specialized training as, as early as 1789. Congress basically authorized states to control this issue of pilotage in and out. Believe it or not, some states don't require you to have a master's license, for example. But you would have to undergo years of apprentice training to become a licensed pilot. And these pilots are key. One of the big issues we saw that happened during the supply chain crisis that held up, for example, bringing ships in and out of LA and Long Beach was there was a finite number of pilots. You can only move so many ships with pilots. And this is a limitation that does exist. Pilots are extremely well paid. In the port of LA, where LA pilots are actually city employees, they're making just under half a million dollars. So it's a extremely lucrative profit. Now, not all pilots make that amount of money, but it is a high risk profession. And you can see that in the how the pilots come on board vessels. So this video is from Brian Boyle. If you don't follow Brian, he's a great follow. If you want to see what it's like to actually work on a ship, Brian is a licensed mate in the U.S. Merchant Marine. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, I've used Brian's videos before. I know Brian. And so this is a great short little video here that talks about a embarkation of a pilot in the port of Houston. We're coming into Houston, Texas now, and I'm going to show you how the pilot will board the ship to take the con of the vessel and take us in safely to port. So the pilot's board on what's called a pilot ladder. And this is set up as a slant or an accommodation ladder, as well as a soft ladder or a Jacob's ladder is another term for it. The pilot boat will come alongside, the pilot will climb up the soft ladder and then climb up the slant ladder to board the vessel and then go up to the bridge. So this is a Houston pilot boat. It is of what's called a swath design, a small water area hull. Uh, I think I got this, the acronym wrong, I apologize. But basically what this is, is a large catamaran hull. And it's a very stable platform. In rough weather, in rough seas, uh, it will remain pretty flat and stable. You can see the red and white flag flying there. That's the hotel flag. That's the, the flag for the letter H in the international code. That stands for pilot on board. They're flying their American flag and of course their good old Texas flag. Uh, pilot will remain usually inside the pilot boat until they're right up alongside. When the pilots embark, they'll have both his hands free. They'll ha usually have a backpack with carrying stuff on board. 
Both along side. Roger. You see the crew standing by at the pilot ladder. They'll also have a rope ready to throw down in case the pilot has any bags that need to be taken on board. He's going to climb up on this platform here. And the pilot boat, one of the reasons you do this while underway is you have better control of the vessels. As the ships are moving through the water, you can basically take that pilot boat and steer a little bit into the side of the vessel and that keeps you up close. He'll now pull away the pilot boat because what you don't want is after a certain height, the pilot to fall back onto the boat. And now you see the pilot embarking on the vessel. That evolution you just watched happens hundreds, if not thousands of times a day in ports all around the world. And it happens routinely without incident. But when accidents do happen, they are quick, they're violent, and they are extremely dangerous. A buddy of mine had a fall off a pilot ladder. The pilot ladder let go on one side. He fell to the deck of the pilot boat and injured himself. Uh, pilots have fallen in the water. Pilots have fallen between the pilot boat and the vessel. Uh, this is a dangerous operation. You are in, you know, you're taking your life into the hands of that crew on board that that pilot ladder, which has basically been rolled up in a box somewhere is in good condition, uh, that it hasn't rotted, that it's not in a poor material condition, that it's been hooked up correctly. And so every time a pilot puts their weight on that pilot ladder the first time, they're taking their life in their hands with that of that crew. And same thing when exiting the vessel. Uh, pilots will usually get off when the ships dock off on the pier side there. They won't get on a pilot boat typically. Or they'll be met by the pilot boat and uh, join it uh, later. Uh, but it is a extremely hazardous profession. What you saw happen there in Houston was a nice, calm day. Uh, you can YouTube videos of pilots boarding on vessels, and you'll see ships rolling and pitching. And you know it, it's a really dangerous operation. I've done ship to sh uh, ship to boat transfers, and it's tough. Uh, it is a difficult thing. You've got to learn when to go. You can't hesitate. You have to move very quickly. Do it on the top of the wave, not at the bottom, because you don't want the boat coming up and hitting you. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have to learn how to do. And uh, my sincerest sympathies go out to that family of the pilot in the UK uh, who just passed away. Uh, terrible story, terrible accident, especially when he was getting so close to retirement. Uh, but it's a dangerous profession. And I think it's important that we all know about that. These are, by the way, the true pilots. They're not aviators. These are pilots. These are, these are the ones. So when uh, uh, those air guys talk about being pilots, they don't know nothing. Uh, it's one thing to fly a little tiny airplane around. It's a whole other thing to drive a ship. That's, that's the big thing. So this is Sal. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, you can do it one of two ways. You can go hit that super thanks button below or head on over to Patreon and you can become a patron of the page. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.